Chapter 581 Sacrifice Idomu didn't think much. There was only one heartfelt desire right now, defeat Dollar. Idomu clutched his daggers upside down like fangs, and his eyes were fixed calmly upon Han Senator, he seemed to be wholly relaxed, as if his breathing had achieved a constant, uninterruptible rhythm. He slowly walked closer to Han Sen, quite unlike the expected killer out for his enemy's blood. He walked casually, as if he were just taking a stroll in the park. Mr. Long, what are your thoughts concerning this fight? Fong Ming Kwan, the commentator, had with him a very famous evolver as a guest on the broadcast. This Mr. Long was known to any person who frequented the official Evolvers platform. He was over 100 years old and had made countless instructional videos to help out fresh Evolvers, teaching them how to perform skills and hunt creatures. Those videos were a great help to normal people, and they reduced the risks Evolvers would take when ascending to the second shelter. His videos were invaluable to the development of people's talents and abilities. This made him a person of much renown, respect, and admiration among Evolvers. Fong Ming Kwan was able to invite Mr. Long as a guest on the broadcast, and it drew in a lot more viewers. People would tune in so they could see what was about to unfold with greater clarity through Mr. Long's live analyses. Mr. Long looked upon the two people pitted against each other in the arena and said, I haven't studied Edo Mu much. But Dollar, I have researched extensively and analyzed his battle tapes. Mr. Long, if you have done serious research on Dollar, could you share some of your conclusions? We are all curious as to what we can expect out of Dollar tonight. We are all extra keen to know whether or not Dollar is using the legendary Heavenly Go as well. Could you provide us your input? Fong Minkwan asked. This is tricky. I have spent a lot of time analyzing this move of his, and what he uses isn't 100% authentic Heavenly Go. It is not even a high-end replication of the skill, either. In fact, it is a low-quality knockoff, Mr. Long replied, with absolute certainty. If Hansen heard what Mr. Long had just said, he would have admired his perception. Hansen really did just copy the skill loosely, and very little of it was of his own invention. So, Mr. Long, you are fairly sure that Dollar is not using the true Heavenly Go. Do you have evidence to back up your claim? Fong Ming Guan noticed from the stream chat that there were many Dollar fans dismissing Mr. Long's statement. Mr. Long was able to see the comments as well, but he calmly said, I haven't had a very fortuitous life, but when I was younger, I was lucky enough to hunt with Fu Chi Mei, and I witnessed the entirety of the skill Heavenly Go. It was right before my eyes. After he said that, no one said anything more about his claim. If Mr. Long was able to witness Fu Chi Mei perform Heavenly Go, then his analysis could not be incorrect. Everyone knew Fu Ching Mei's Heavenly Go since the skill gained its popularity from her. At this time, Idomu made a move towards Han Sr. Mr. Long, who was watching Idomu's casual demeanor as he strolled, expressed absolute surprise. In his reaction, he blurted out, Huh? Mr. Long, what is going on? Although Fong Ming Kwan was a professional commentator, he didn't know much about fighting skills. It was because of this that he did not notice anything special. Mr. Long said with admiration in his voice, if I am not mistaken, Yi Dong Mu is using sacrifice. This skill is relying on your mental fortitude, not your physical power. If you could not focus your mind, it would not matter if you were a surpasser, you could not perform the moves efficiently. That sounds like an incredible fighting skill. How would you gauge his performance, Mr. Long? Fong Minkwan asked. Fighting skills aren't mathematics. Everything is relative on the field of battle, and that is especially true of this skill, which depends entirely on the situation in which it is cast. I cannot use numbers to calculate his performance of it. All I can say is that Yi Dongmu has indeed mastered sacrifice. A great future must lay ahead for this young man. Fong Minkwan then asked. My knowledge of fighting skills is limited, so I'm not entirely sure what sacrifice is. Could you provide me and the audience an explanation of why sacrifice is so spectacular? To use sacrifice, you must throw away all the other thoughts that might occupy your mind. You need to be without fear, without worry, without sorrow, and without happiness. Your mind must devote itself to one singular purpose. If you do this, then you can achieve mastery of sacrifice and it will aid you. But doing this is more difficult than it sounds. Reaching the state absolute single-mindedness is something not even the ancient heroes of your could frequently attain. And what's more, Yidomu is still so young. 
His ability to channel sacrifice through his pure, dust-free mind is something extremely rare. Mr. Long was in true admiration of Yi Dongmu. Fong Mingguan noticed Mr. Long was not speaking in specifics and was failing to explain what the skill sacrifice actually did. So, he had to ask, I'm not sure what type of skill sacrifice is. The most straightforward explanation I gave give is that sacrifice is a movement. But it's not just any movement, it's one that combines the sky with the earth. Every step he takes will accelerate his momentum and increase the power he can achieve. The more steps he takes, the more power and momentum he can use. If he reaches 100 steps, then his power and momentum will max out. If that were to occur, I don't think there is anyone out there who could stop such an attack. Is it really that powerful? If he only takes 100 steps, then Dollar will lose? When Fong Mingguan heard this, he was shocked. The audience watching the stream started to discuss the skill amongst themselves, too. Is that true? That sounds way too magical. According to what Mr. Long says, if he Dongwu took 10,000 steps, then he could beat the world. There must be a reason why Mr. Long is saying this. I think what Mr. Long says makes sense. Look at he Dongwu's momentum. It's getting stronger and stronger. Even right now, my heart trembles. Is sacrifice really that powerful? Oh, no. Dollar doesn't know Idomu is using sacrifice. He should strike now, before he gathers too much momentum. Mr. Long shook his head and said, It is easier for someone to make up his mind to die for a noble purpose than to actually go through the execution of such sacrifice. Sacrifice still needs its user to maintain his focus for the entire duration of the cast. The longer he walks, the greater the chance his faith and focus might change. If his resolve quivers by only just a bit, his momentum will decrease. It is very much like war. First, there is much momentum, but when the horrors of battle rear their ugly faces, it's gone before you know it. Humans are sensitive beings, and even scholars and geniuses cannot maintain their faith forever. The highest sacrifice I have seen was 100 steps. Even if he kept on walking after this, his momentum would still decrease. I wonder how many steps Yi Dongmu will be able to take with his usage of sacrifice. Fong Mingguan was watching Yi Dongmu intently. After Mr. Long's explanation, viewers of the stream started counting Yi Dongmu's steps. Chapter 582, The Final Strike. 10 steps. 20 steps. 30 steps. Everyone could calculate that the distance between Yi Dongmu and Han Sen was about 50 steps. If Han Sen still did not strike, then Yi Dongmu would be right in front of him in about 50 more steps. Yi Dongmu had only walked 30 steps, yet his momentum had already risen a great deal. It was as if he had been possessed by a god. With every step, his momentum increased. Every step was like the tide of the sea, and a strong, ever-surging gust of wind was blowing Han Senator the atmosphere was volatile, teetering on the precipice of a grand storm. Yet Hansen still did not move. He just watched Yi Dongmu calmly, standing firm against the waves. Boom. With every step, Yi Dongmu was generating increasingly ferocious waves that sought to topple and consume Han Senior. Faster and faster, faster and faster, Yi Dongmu's footsteps were getting really quick, and he was now only five steps away from Han Senator. The momentum in his body was illuminating him with some form of angelic light, and it frightened those who were watching. He's going to strike. Everyone had stopped breathing, and they observed Yi Dongmu without any idea what his attack was going to be like. But even now, Yi Dongmu's daggers were still in his hands, propped behind the arm in a manner that suggested he wasn't yet ready to attack. When the distance between the two fighters had reached a mere two steps, Hansen finally moved. But he didn't go forward, instead, he went back. He fell back like a rowboat that had been rocked away by a tumultuous sea. Hansen refaced Yi Dongmu with a calm look, in stark contrast to the fiery appearance of Yi Dongmu. Now, they were only one step away from each other. One step forward, one step back. It looked as if neither would connect. Dollar. He was retreating. The crowd's eyes widened in disbelief. No one had expected Dollar to back away, and now, no one believed that he actually had. Does Dollar fear Idomu's sacrifice? Everyone was now wondering this. Beautiful. Dollar is a smart guy. He made the right choice. Mr. Long complimented Han Sen's action. Mr. Long thinks Dollar did a good thing? Fong Mingguan looked at Mr. Long with a confused expression. Yes, it was a clever retreat. Mr. Long looked excited as he continued. Earlier, 
I said what was most important about sacrifice was the momentum. If you reach max capacity, you will only get worse and worse. Idolmu has already walked 53 steps, and he has already gathered a lot of power and momentum. If Dollar chooses to fight back with him right now, it'd be a bad decision. When he fell back just now, it opened up a great set of possibilities and opportunities. If he keeps avoiding Idomu, up until sacrifice weakens, that would be the time for him to strike. It is a beautiful response, one that proves how smart and wise a fighter he is. After hearing Mr. Long's profound analysis, everyone watching understood. This means Idomu will have to catch up with Dollar before his momentum decreases, otherwise, it will be difficult to win. Am I understanding this correctly? Fong Minkwan asked. Yes, Mr. Long nodded. The strongest person I have ever seen only managed to walk 100 steps. If Idomu can catch up with Dollar with 100 momentum building steps, the power unleashed from a hit of that force may be unavoidable. That would utterly wreck and annihilate Dollar. However, if he cannot catch up by the time he hits 100, there is a 90% chance Dollar will have already won. Everyone was intently focused on these two characters, who were chasing each other around the arena. They were too nervous to say anything, and they kept their eyes fixed on two men like they had been startled by thunder. They were both only one step away from each other. If Idomu took one more step, then his dagger could hurt Han Senator, but despite taking each last step, he was unable to get any closer. They both watched each other, moving about quickly. They were like twin birds, quickly walking 10 meters. 60, 70, 80. Everyone quietly counted each step to themselves. Every step was like a jump scare, frightening their hearts. Through the power of his momentum and strength, Idomu's speed became frightening, and he was only continuing to get faster. Can Idomu really catch up with Dollar before he reaches his hundredth step? Even Tang Jin Liu was nervous, and his hands were sweating. Lin Feng calmly responded, 100 steps? That is only the start. Shocked, Tang Jin Liu looked at Lin Feng and asked, What does that mean? Look, Lin Feng only said one word and gestured to the two fighters in the arena. 85, 90, 95, 100. Hansen turned around and started walking, but Idomu did not catch up. After taking his 100th step, everyone's heart sighed. Idomu was brimming with insane power, but Dollar's strategy had worked. He had made it too hard for Idomu to use his true strength. After 100 steps, everyone feared Idomu's momentum would fall into insignificance, and he'd be unable to catch up with Dollar at all. Although people thought Dollar was going to win, Dollar's fans were a little disappointed. This form of winning lacked the certain spice they had come to expect, and it lacked excitement. But people then realized that after 100 steps, Idomu's momentum did not weaken. Instead, it was continuing to increase by a scary amount. He was like a god. And he came at Hansen with greater ferocity. 110, 115, 120. Oh, my days. It is too powerful. It is too powerful. A 120 step sacrifice? And this insane momentum continues to grow? For this man to so young, and to have such talent with this skill, his abilities are unfathomable. Mr. Long's voice was trembling, and you can see the excitement that pounded within him. Idomu's approach towards Hansen was crazy, and everyone's heart leapt with each step taken. A feverish excitement had grabbed a hold of their hearts, as if it tugged them to run alongside Idomu together. Boom. 150. Idomu's body cracked the air in two, sounding thunder. His hair trailed in the wind of his pursuit, hunting after Hansen like some mad god of lightning. His body had reached maximum capacity, and it seemed as if it would even be able to tear the space by a single strike. 150 steps? 150 steps. Mr. Long was at a loss for words. Through his whole life, this was the first time he had ever witnessed such a phenomenal talent. And it was at this moment that Hansen stopped. He was moving incredibly quickly, but when he stopped all of a sudden, he became a mountain, allowing the waves to shatter against his body. After all these steps, the don't lose momentum had reached its maximum. Kill. In this final step, Idomu no longer resembled a human being. Following his raging sprint, with his long mane of hair riding the violent winds of his passing, the daggers in his hands moved. In this moment, everyone understood, Dollar wasn't falling back. He did not fear his opponent, and he wasn't employing the strategy Mr. Long had been talking about. 
All this time he had just been waiting, waiting for Edomu to reach his prime and unleash his most powerful attack. Chapter 583 This life, this world, this sky, this earth, this single strike. The audience that were in their seats couldn't help but stand up and lean forward with their mouths open to watch Edomu perform his final strike. Edomu's momentum and power had reached maximum capacity, and now, the daggers in his hands finally moved. They traveled at an unimaginable speed, quicker than the wind. You cannot touch the wind, nor can you see it. The beginning and then end of that strike was untraceable. Although everyone knew Edomu was going to strike, when he actually did it, people thought their eyes were playing tricks as the strike launched out of nowhere. Its speed was so great, people could not follow the blade and its driving hand, but a collective gasp of shock was still given by the entire audience. Following that tantalizing moment, chills ran down their spines and their faces were drawn of their color. It was as if the spectators themselves each suffered the same strike. Although they were unable to watch the blade on its journey, everyone was able to imagine it. They pictured it rocketing through the air, cleaving through Hans Sin's neck and letting his head be carried by the wind, painting the arena in claret. In reality, when the sudden gust of gale force wind started, the blade disappeared from their eyesight. When they felt it, it was already too late. Windstrike! Mr. Long shouted. With wide eyes, he watched Edomu unleash his strike. But people weren't paying attention to what he was saying anymore, as the focus of the audience and spectators now moved to Han Sr. Everyone was eager for the result. The scary power of a 150-step sacrifice had built up within a soul man, and it had been delivered to a single opponent through a blade. They did not know how Hansen could survive it. Fall back. Aside from falling back, they did not know how anyone could avoid being the recipient of such a strike. But then they thought to themselves, who could possibly be able to react and fall back in the time from such a strike? They imagined if a person sought to dodge the incoming attack, their head would have been removed from their body before their toes had been lifted. Can't dodge it. Everyone who thought to put themselves in Dollar's boots and imagine how he might react had their faces turned white, thinking to themselves how they probably wouldn't even see the strike coming. The wind does not have a shape, but a knife does. Han Sen's hand did not possess a weapon, and in this terrifying moment, he placed the palms of his hands together like a praying Buddha. His eyes did not even look at the knife come his way, and still, he looked so calm and so chill. It was in fascinating contrast to Edomu's raging, intimidating aura. The people who watched it felt really bad. Dong. The extreme attack by Edomu, the final strike of sacrifice and the blade of its deliverance, found itself caught and wedged between Hansen's palms. It was at that moment the storm stopped, and the air became gentle. The excitement that had built up was now empty. Silence robbed the room of its life, and it was as if time stood still. The brutal attack had been stopped by a man's bare hands. Everyone's mouth dropped. They scoured the canvas of that scene in absolute shock. No one was able to believe or accept that the strike that had received so much buildup was now over. It was like a truck going over 200 miles per hour being brought to an instant stop without any prior sign. The audience felt strange, and they could hardly accept what their eyes told them. Even if a vehicle was going at 200 miles per hour, slowing down to stop would take some noticeable time. And even if such a truck had smashed into a wall, considerable damage would be dealt to both objects. But nothing happened here. Everything just came to an instant stop. The blade's distance to Dollar's eyebrow was only about an inch, but even that was a great distance. Dollar was like a Buddha that was able to operate and control everything. His palms had their own sky, and that moment was forever. Even if the sky was falling, and the world was ending, nothing would have allowed his hands to move an additional inch. It was unfathomable, not a single sound came from the audience seats. It was as if the brains of everyone there could not react. The countless eyes of the spectators just watched those two still silent people. Edomu's hands, still clutching his daggers, were trembling. The strike that was known to kill anything did not even pass his enemy's hand. The way of the assassin teaches that in failure, it is over for you. This strike took everything for Edomu to perform, and this was not the result he had expected. His will to continue this fight was now broken. His face was pale as snow, and his hands were trembling so hard that he could no longer hold his knife. Hansen moved his hand to grab the dagger. He returned it to Idomu and said, I accept the passion behind this strike. This life, this world, this sky, 
this earth, this single strike. He don't lose body was shaking. He took the dagger and turned a complicated look on Han Sr. The battle did not continue. Hansen quit the virtual platform. Hidomu and Dollar left, and although the fighters had not determined who was the victor and who was the loser, everyone knew it in their hearts. I accept the passion behind this strike. I am going to cry. Puri Domu. This life, this world, this sky, this earth, this single strike. Hidomu was honored to have these words spoken to him. That attack was so powerful, it was a shame he had to go against Dollar to use it. People always like to believe themselves better than others. It is a tragedy of this generation. Don't cry, don't will. We will support you forever. In our hearts, you are the strongest assassin king. Dollar is still Dollar. Fong Minkwan gave a long sigh. Feeling sorry, he said. This attack determines life and death. But for now, they are strangers. One battle fought by two legends. This is something that we will never witness again. Hearing Fong Minkwan say this, everyone's mood turned a bit dim. Because Dollar and Yi Dongmu made their arrangement, they would never fight again. This was their final match. Mr. Long, what is your review of this fight? Fong Minkwan turned to Mr. Long and asked, This life, this world, this sky, this earth, this single strike. Mr. Long repeated that sentence and left the virtual platform. Almost everyone who watched this fight rewatched it a number of times. But no matter how many times they watched it, they were parched and thirsty for more. They watched it again and again, unable to stop. What happened to Idomu is a shame. The passion behind this strike, I want to see it again. I have to see it again. Her Prince. I am willing to give up 10 years of my life for the opportunity to watch those two fight again. I accept the passion behind this strike. I am going to cry. Dollar was too cruel and he robbed Idomu of his soul. After Fong Minkwan returned to his office, he sorted out the video recording of the battle. It did not need editing, it only needed a title and an article to go alongside it. But this article was not for Dollar, it was for Edomo. Assassin King, this life and this world never end. This sky, this earth, and this single strike. To see the cruel reign all these years, only Edomo's passion was the most touching. This is for my favorite Assassin King Edomo. For the result of this fight, few people mentioned Dollar. Most of the talk was directed to Idomo. Even though he didn't win, the passion behind that strike touched the hearts of all who had seen it. It led to him being given the title Assassin King. But as for Dollar, he was already an unbeatable deity and people no longer had any interest in talking about him anymore. Chapter 584 Red Scale Dragon Watching Dollar battle is so boring. I want to watch Hansen battle Idomo. Two assassins fighting each other would be pretty fun. Tang Xunliu sat on his sofa re-watching the video of Yi Dongmu and Dollar's final battle. A battle between two assassins would be too fatal, Lin Feng said quietly. That's why it would be exciting. But those two don't have a grudge with each other, so the chance of them fighting would be pretty low. It is a shame, though. Tang Xunliu felt remorseful. The two people that Tang Xunliu spoke about were in the shelter, one meter apart. I'm going to hunt a red scale dragon. Do you want to come? Hidomu looked at Hansen and asked. That is too dangerous. Hansen blinked. The red scale dragon that Hidomu mentioned was a powerful sacred blood creature. Even with the powers they both possessed, it would be an incredibly difficult fight. It is dangerous. That is why I am going. Hidomu turned to leave as he spoke. Then let's go. Hansen knew that Hidomu's spirit had been crushed. He didn't say much. He just followed Idomu to the slopes of a particularly snowy mountain. Idomu killed the creatures along the way in one hit. Seeing him angry like that, Hansen began to believe it may have been better if he had thrown the match and lost. But Idomu was really powerful, and if it wasn't for Hansen's constant practice of wind strike with him, he most likely would not have been able to block the skill. The wind didn't feel entirely clean, and it made Hansen feel a little ashamed. Before long, they both reached the cap of the mountain where the red scale dragon was said to reside. From afar, they saw a creature that looked like a T-Rex on the slopes of the mountain, curled up and sleeping in the snow. Because it had not yet been given a name, it was Idomu who called it Red Scale Dragon. According to him, the power and speed of the creature were incredibly high, and even with sacred blood weaponry, its scales would be extremely difficult to penetrate. He had come here twice before attempting to kill it, but it failed both times. 
But today, Idong Lu had clearly resolved not to be beaten again. He was going to kill it, no matter what it took. Idomu summoned his beast soul daggers and ran towards the red scale dragon. He was shouting all the way, and it gave Hansen a cold sweat. Jeez, you are an assassin. What is wrong with you? Running in with a battle cry like some brutish warrior. Hansen felt deflated, but still, he summoned his silver eye eye snake king sword and ancient mascot sword and ran to the other side of the red scale dragon, which was now rising from its slumber. Dong, dong, dong. Hansen and Idomu's weapons were slashing the red scale dragon with ardent ferocity, but their strikes only left shallow scratches in the dragon scales. The creature was unharmed. The red scale dragon was like a mechanical truck that kept sprinting up and down the slopes of that mountain. It was so fast and fierce that Idomu and Hansen could only dodge again and again, unable to get in hits from the front. You go draw its attention. Idomu barked the order at Hansen before running behind the red scale dragon. Why don't you draw its attention? Hansen felt frustrated, but he still waved his two blades to hack at the red scale dragon's legs. He managed to obtain the red scale dragon's attention, and with a capped aggro, was promptly chased all over the mountainside. Idomu found the perfect opening and managed to leap onto its head from behind. He repeatedly stabbed the creature in its neck the only spot that wasn't plated in thick scales. Roar! The red scale dragon thundered its agony. It shook its head and threw Idomu down into the snow. Then the red scales of the dragon burst into flames. As they seared in fire, the scales turned to crystal. Holy smokes, it's turning berserk. Run! Hansen yelled, and then started running away. Although Idomu's mood was foul, he wasn't stupid. He joined Hansen and ran as fast as his legs could carry him. But the red scale dragon was furious. It chased them over the mountains and valleys for over 100 miles before they finally lost the monster on their heels. Idomu and Hansen felt as if their legs were ready to snap by the time they outran their pursuer. Gasping in unison, they collapsed to the ground for respite. After a while, Idomu said, You were going to attack the royal shelter? Yes. Hansen looked at Idomu and then continued, You want to join me? Be careful of Chishioin. After Idomu issued his warning, he got up and turned to leave. Hansen remained sitting in the snow. He shook his head and said, I don't know if Chi Xiuen convinced Li Xinglinan and Philip to join me yet, but I have to take down that royal shelter as soon as I possibly can. Hansen remained unconcerned about Chi Xiuen. With the silver fox around him most of the time, he knew no evolver could cause him great harm, no one across the ice fields, at least. Before the terrifying power of the Silver Fox, all conspiracies would be useless against him. Hansen then got up but noticed something moving in the snow up ahead. He stayed as still as he could, trying to figure out what he had just seen. He saw something move around in the snow, and after a while, a big white turtle came out from under the powdery snow. The turtle was pretty large. After it emerged from the snow, it poked its head about to look around. It seemed to be searching for something. Hansen watched the turtle from a good distance, but he could see where it had come from. Behind it there was an ice cave that appeared to have been flooded. The surface of the water was mostly ice, and it was dressed in thick snow, so it took a decent pair of eyes to see it. The big turtle wasn't looking for Hansen, and after it walked around in a few circles, it returned to the cave it had emerged from. It then dipped its head into the water. Whether it was drinking or not remained to be seen. A while later, the turtle pulled its head back and simply looked into the ice cave. Hansen thought it was a strange sight, so he sat back down and continued his observation in greater comfort. After some time had passed, another turtle came out of the water in the cave. But compared to the first turtle, this turtle was much smaller. It was like a small rice bowl. After this small turtle exited the water, many more followed. At final count, nine turtles came out of the water of the ice cave. Hansen, who was hiding in the snow, opened his eyes wide and said, these cannot be the babies of the big turtle, right? Hansen was aware that it was a difficult task for creatures to breed. He had only ever seen a golden growler, an old turtle, and an obsidian dragon give birth, and their litters were incredibly small, usually singular. Yet this big turtle had eight baby turtles behind it. If they were its children, those numbers were crazy. After the eight turtles came out to join the big turtle, the big turtle led them down to a wide basin below the snow-cloaked mountain. Watching the trail of turtles take off on their little adventure, Hansen could not help but admire them and think they were rather cute. 
Hansen did not know the details of the snow turtles he had just seen and could not tell what tier of monster they could be considered. So, all he did was hide in the snow and watch. After the big turtle reached the basin below the mountain, it used its claws to dig into the snow. Hansen watched as it slowly unearthed red mushrooms. Then, when the smaller turtles arrived, they each happily started eating their bounty of food. Chapter 585 Red Mushrooms Hansen was amazed. Seeing a creature bring its children to eat was an incredibly rare sight, one that few people would ever be given the honor of seeing. When the snow turtles began to dig into their food, the screech of a bird came out of the sky. A golden bird dropped into view. As if it had been searching for the turtles, it came down at an extremely high speed with its talons raised and ready to snatch them. Pop! Before the threatening bird reached them, the big snow turtle shot a beam of frost towards it. In the next second, the bird turned into a block of ice. From the height it fell, it hit the ground hard and shattered into nothing but bits and pieces. Holy smokes! It's a super creature! Hansen was staring at the turtle with wide eyes. This was the first time Hansen had ever seen such a large amount of super creature babies all in one place. There were eight of them, and now, Hansen was afraid to even breathe. The last thing he wanted was for the snow turtle to take notice of his presence. The silver fox was frighteningly powerful, even as a baby. But here, there were eight super creature children and their mother. Woe to him if they thought Hansen to be hostile. Seeing the golden bird shatter into crumbs of ice, Hansen felt a shiver run down his spine. Being afraid to breathe, he gave the task over to his cells so he could continue watching the nine turtles eat. After the small turtles ate the red mushrooms, the bodies of the creatures started to glow red. At first, the turtles were as white as the snow itself. But now, they looked like blood turtles. The small turtles were really young, as their size suggested. Thus, they couldn't eat much, and after eating a mushroom about the size of a man's fist, they were full. But the big turtle was really hungry, and it ate about 10 mushrooms before it turned red. It looked like the turtles were all satisfied, and when they were, the big turtle buried the red mushrooms beneath the snow again. Then it led the small turtles back to the ice cave where they had first emerged. Hansen waited until they had all entered the cave and swam down beneath the water. The big turtle went in last, and before it went down deep, it let out another frosty beam to reseal the ice where they had come out. No one would have been able to tell something lived under there. Hansen waited for a while longer, and when he confirmed there was no more movement, he ran to the area where the snow turtles had eaten and dug his way down to the red, fist-sized mushrooms. They seemed like mushrooms you would cook. They were the size of a fist, and they glistened with a sparkling clarity. They also emanated a lovely smell, and Hansen wagered they would taste pretty good. Hansen used to follow a certain botanist, and through him, he learned many of the tips and tricks one could use to identify plants, herbs, and mushrooms. He looked at the red mushrooms and noticed there were only three left. The rest had already been eaten by the turtles, but judging from the way they looked, they didn't seem poisonous. There were many strange plants back at the shelter that Hansen wouldn't dare eat. Hansen pulled out a bag and picked a single mushroom to put inside it. He didn't take any more, but he prepared to take the mushroom with him, thinking it might become useful. He covered the others with snow once again and summoned his golden growler. He collected and reassembled the body of the shattered bird and placed it upon the golden growler. It looked like a sacred blood creature, and even if it was only a mutant, Hansen didn't want to waste it. This was free stuff that he wasn't going to pass up. Back inside the Crystal Palace, Hansen asked Zero to cook the golden bird's meat. Then, he heard the announcement, Sacred Blood Golden Wing Bird Flesh has been consumed. Sacred Geno points obtained is zero. Because he ate so little, he was unable to increase his Sacred Geno point total. But that still made Hansen quite happy. Although he had failed to hunt the Red Scale Dragon, the free collection of a Sacred Blood Golden Wing Bird made up for it. He ate a whole meal of the Sacred Blood Golden Wing Bird, but his point total did not increase. There was still a lot of meat left, however. So Hansen prepared it and got ready to eat it all slowly. The bird wasn't that big, after all, so he figured he would be able to eat it all within 10 days. Back in the Alliance, Hansen found a way he could contact Professor Sun ming -Wa. Although Professor Sun had spent his entire life in the First God's Sanctuary, he had yielded incredible results for the world of botany, and this was something few would understand. Hansen gave him the details of the red mushroom he had collected and told him about the turtles. 
He wanted the professor to find out whether or not the mushrooms possessed any beneficial traits that would apply to him. It was a shame that he could not carry the mushroom out of the shelter, otherwise, he would have brought it for the professor to see. Professor Sun intently listened to Han Sin's description of the mushroom and then asked a few questions. After a brief pause, he said, According to what you have told me, this red mushroom sounds like it could be something quite powerful. Professor Sun, is there any way you could tell me if this red mushroom can benefit humans? Hansen thought these snow turtles had the ability to find rare plants to eat. The food that super creatures consumed had to be good stuff, but humans were biologically different than creatures, so Hansen wasn't sure whether or not humans could eat it. The shelter's plants have great power. They should be quite effective on humans, but the bodies of humans are very different. It is difficult to say whether the effects will benefit you or ail you. After that, Professor Sun stopped. He hesitated for a while, but then began talking to Hansen again. I have something to tell you, but after I do, I want you to forget I told you this. And I absolutely do not want you telling others. I understand, Hansen responded dubiously. Professor Sun then said, in the third god sanctuary, there are some amazing plants that can improve your genes. But still, humans have yet to fully uncover which are beneficial and which are harmful. The way such food is eaten is important, as well. If eaten incorrectly, the benefits you would expect to receive can instead become deadly. Hansen thought what the professor said was quite strange, and so he replied, If humans cannot determine the effects a plant will impart, how can we find out which ones can improve a human's genes? I won't answer this question, but after you visit the third god sanctuary, you will understand. Professor Sun seemed to dodge Hansen's question, and he quickly changed the subject. He only told Hansen a few simple methods he could use to help determine what consumption of the red mushroom might do. Hansen felt curiosity swell in his heart. There were quite a few surpassa humans, a few hundred thousand at least. Despite this, information regarding the third god's sanctuary was quite limited. Surpassers never talked about it, and there was very little information about it to be found in the Alliance. Now, with Professor Sun not willing to talk about the third god's sanctuary anymore, Han Sin's curiosity about the place increased. According to the advice Professor Sun gave him, Han Sin was going to give the red mushroom to another creature to try out. Maybe then he would see the effects it could impart. Han Sin then thought to himself, I wonder if the silver fox would be willing to eat it? Back in the Crystal Palace, Hansen picked up the silver fox and placed the red mushroom in front of its mouth. He was eager to see how it would react. Chapter 586 Poison Test The silver fox saw the red mushroom, opened its mouth, and swallowed it. And then Hansen and the fox looked at each other. There was no movement for quite some time. That's it. Give me some reaction, at least. Hansen waited for a while longer. But still, the silver fox did not react. He might as well have eaten a candy bar. After waiting a while further, there was still no sign of anything changing. The only curious thing he had learnt was that the silver fox was very interested in eating it. Fortunately, Hansen knew where he could find another two, back in the snow. So he returned to that icy tundra and dug up one of the two remaining mushrooms. This time, though, he didn't give it to silver fox. Instead, he cut it into pieces and hung one slice from a tree. Then, he waited to see if any creatures in the vicinity would take interest in it. It wasn't much later when a boar arrived. It came for the mushroom, but despite a few strenuous jumps, it was unable to nab the food of its desire. It didn't give up so easily, though, for it then circled around the mushroom that was dangling from the tree, refusing to leave it. A while later a few smaller creatures arrived, like snakes and bugs. There was a squirrel amongst them, and it quickly raced up the tree and got the mushroom. It hastily swallowed every morsel. The squirrel had gray hair, but after eating the mushroom, it turned red. Then, the creature shone like a beautiful ruby gem. Hansen grabbed a few more slices of the mushroom and spread them about the area to see if he could test it out on a number of other creatures. Hansen then discovered something new. Not every creature was interested in the mushroom, only a good deal of them. But every creature Hansen saw eat a bit of that mushroom had a noticeable change. Their response to the food was vastly different than the silver fox's reaction when it did nothing without letting out nary a fart. When ordinary creatures ate it, however, they appeared smarter, more energized, and of course, red. But aside from that, Hansen couldn't tell what more. 
Hansen recorded the reaction given by the creatures after eating a piece of the red mushroom, then returned to the Alliance. He sent the data to Professor Sun for analysis. Professor Sun told him that he would need some time, and that he would give Hansen the results of his research in about two days' time. Hansen had half a mushroom left that he planned to keep. Unfortunately for him, he left it lying around and the silver fox caught scent of its presence, dashed to it, and gobbled it all up. After eating the mushroom, it leapt into Han Sin's arms and fell asleep. It is fortunate I did not take both, otherwise, they'd all be in your belly. That would be a waste. Han Sin was glad. Chi Xiuan was still away in his talks with Li Xingluan and Philip and had yet to return. Han Sin could only assume that the talks were not going so well. But he wasn't in a rush, so he had plenty of time to relax and read a few books. He also spent some time training his Dongshan Sutra and Jade Sun Force. He even managed to squeeze in time for a bit of practice with Duel. Overall, the days were calm and without interruption. It had been a while since things were this relaxing. Hansen, after my analysis, I have come to the conclusion that the red mushroom you discovered is a provision that can increase one's vitality. It's not the most in-depth research result, but I would suggest that you try it out yourself. Eat a little bit and see what happens. Professor Sun seemed to be quite interested in the red mushroom. He didn't wait for Han Sin to follow up on his request, and he got in touch as soon as he could. You don't think there'll be any problems with it, do you? Han Sin felt a little strange, for he would feel bad eating this in the shelter. Just eat a little bit, no more than 10 grams of the stuff. But be prepared. If something does go wrong and it doesn't sit well in your stomach, make sure you have an alchemical concoction to help flush it out. General medicine for sickness would be good, too. You'll most likely be on your own doing this so be prepared to save yourself. After that, Professor Sun continued, but from what I can see, it should not be harmful. If it really is something that can strengthen your body, then go for it. Just don't eat too much, lest it bring you harm. I'll think about it. Hansen did not dare to say he would indeed try eating it. It's a shame I don't know anyone out on the ice field. If I did, I could have someone accompany you and help test it out, Professor Sun said in a remorseful tone of voice. But what Professor Sun had just said gave Hansen an idea. If he did not want to take the risk of eating it, why not find someone else to do it for him? That Zhu Ting is deadly perfume. It should be no problem for a toxic man like that to try it out. I'll get him to give it a go. Hansen thought, deciding Zhu Ting would be his guinea pick. Zhu Ting had to be the tester, for if it was someone closer with Hansen and something went wrong, Hansen couldn't handle the responsibility of bringing harm to his friends. Besides, Zhu Ting was known to eat poison like he had a sweet tooth for the stuff, so there was no one more qualified to try out the red mushroom than him. Anyway, Hansen picked up the last bit of mushroom he had from when he was testing it out on the creatures of the ice field and threw it into a meal he was cooking. He prepared a few different dishes and invited Zhu Ting over for dinner. Come, let's drink together this night. Hansen dragged Zhu Ting over to sit down, speaking with overbearing friendliness. Zhu Ting looked at Hansen with an extremely puzzled expression, thinking, why would this guy invite me over for dinner? He must be conspiring against me or something. Is the food poisoned? Does he want to poison me? Huh? Is that it? No way, he's not that stupid. Surely, he knows I have deadly perfume and I am immune to poison. He must have dropped his brain somewhere, if he has thought to poison me. Hansen was acting all nice, dishing Zhu Ting as much food as he could, topping up his drink after every swig. Brother Zhu, have you gotten used to living out here on the ice field? If you are having issues, feel free to confide in me. I may not be able to help you with big things, but if it's something relatively small, I'll do what I can to make your life here all the more comfortable. Zhu Ting then retreated back into his mind and said to himself, something here is not right. This guy must be buttering me up because he needs me for something. There is no way he is being this nice out of the kindness of his heart. Zhu Ting rolled his eyes and then boisterously thought, Fine, if you have something you want to ask of me, and you're even going so far as to call me brother, I am going to be the boss. Brother Han, if there is something you want, just tell me. Considering our relationship, there is no need for you to put on such a show. Zhu Ting was scoffing the food and chugging the wine as he spoke. I do have a favor to ask of you, funnily enough, Hansen said. Then shoot. If you and I are brothers, there are no hoops you need to jump through before asking me something, and neither must you beat around the bush. If I can help? Zhu Ting's tone of voice then changed. You know, it is difficult to live. 
I am so poor. I have very little money. No problem. If you help me out, I'll give you 10,000 coins. No sweat, Hansen told him. 10,000? Zhu Ting froze, thinking, what do you think I am? A beggar? 10,000 won't even buy me an afternoon refreshment. Zhu Ting laughed and responded, 10,000. Aha, you want me to help you drink something? Something like that. I dug up some mushrooms out on the ice field. I would like you try some out and tell me whether or not they are poisonous. I know you have deadly perfume, which makes you immune. You are only going to give me 10,000 for doing something as dangerous as that. Zhu Ting peered at Hansen with an expression that painted him as a bona fide cheap bastard. Oh no. Hansen slapped his lap. Oh no what? Zhu Ting looked spooked. Why didn't you say something earlier? I thought you had already agreed. And see? I have already served you the food. Hansen was wearing his innocent face. You bastard. Zhu Ting's face started turning green. Chapter 587 the use of red mushrooms. Zhu Ting was not afraid of being poisoned. It was just that Hansen was toxic enough himself. Brother Zhu, don't you worry. Your deadly perfume is the best. There is no need for you to fear those little mushrooms. Even if they are poisonous, there is no way they can poison you. The Poison King. Yes? Hansen did his best to comfort him. I suppose. Zhu Ting said cockily, but then he changed his face and said, but this is different. I know I am good. But good or bad, 10,000 is not enough. No problem. I am willing to raise the monetary offering for this kind service of yours to a whopping 20,000, Hansen said with a smile. Zhu Ting was angry, and he pleaded, Hansen, you do not treat professionals with the respect they deserve. 20,000? To lay bricks would give me more. You, make, me, um, something is wrong. What is it? Is it the poison? Don't worry, I have medicine prepared. Quickly, shove this down your throat, and I'll get you on your way to the detox center so they can rinse out your bowels. Hansen quickly grabbed the medicine professor's son told him about. But when he looked back, Zhu Ting's face and eyes had gone ruby red. He was gasping for air like an enraged bull and sweating profusely as he looked at Han Sr. Brother Zhu, don't look at me like that. I thought your deadly perfume rendered you immune to fatal poisons. Who knew? Before Hansen could finish his sentence, Zhu Ting started to tear the clothes from his body. Much to his surprise, a muscular body was revealed beneath. Zhu Ting had an eight pack. Geez, what are you doing? Hansen reached out his hands to ward off Zhu Ting from coming any closer. Zhu Ting's eyes were red with lust, and as he advanced on Hansen, he tried to get on top of him to rip his clothes off. Zhu Ting tried to kiss him with the ferocity of a horny bear. I want. I want. Zhu Ting moaned and groaned in between his mumbling. Holy smokes. Those mushrooms can't be aphrodisiacs, can they? Hansen pushed Zhu Ting away from him and dashed out of the room. He closed the door on his lusty aggressor and locked it tight. Pang, pang, pang. Zhu Ting hammered the stone door like a madman. Brother Zhu, hold on. I'm going to get you a woman. Hansen was glad that the shelter's doors were made of stone. Due to the strength needed to break down such a door, there was no way Zhu Ting would be able to escape. I can't take it anymore. Zhu Ting screamed from behind his stone ward. Hold on. Use your hand first, while I go search for a woman in the meantime. Hansen double-checked that the door was locked firm, and then ran off. After walking around Black God's shelter for some time, Hansen came across an impoverished woman who was willing to sell her body to make ends meet. On a horse, she returned with Hans Sr. Brother Zhu, I have brought a woman to take care of all your needs. As Hansen opened the door, he saw Zhu Ting sprawled out across the floor with a few shreds of cloth over his body. Crumpled balls of tissue lay scattered around the room. Hansen, are you even a human being? I cannot believe you fed me horny pills. Zhu Ting was furious, and he ran towards Hansen, trying to grab him by the neck. Hansen dodged the incoming assault and tried to reason with him, saying, Brother Zhu, see? I have brought you a woman. But who would have guessed you'd finish up that quickly, eh? Quick, my ass. You were out there for two hours, and here I was, all alone and almost bleeding. And besides, what kind of woman did you even bring me? This fat tramp looks to weigh 200 kilograms. Is it a mutant creature? Zhu Ting yelled angrily at Han Sr. A woman with a little booty is good. You'll never understand. Hansen waited around for a little while So Zhu Ting could calm down. Then he asked, 
Brother Zhu, aside from this, can you tell me of any other effects the red mushroom had upon you? Before he replied, Zhu Ting reached out his hand and said, Give me my money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hansen reached into his pockets and presented Zhu Ting with a few thousand dollar bills. Regretting what he had subjected Zhu Ting to, he said, I know I was only supposed to give you 20,000, but take 30. Consider it my way of apologizing and trying to make up for what I just put you through. And payment for that woman will come out of own pocket. There is no need for you to cover the fee. Zhu Ting thought what he was saying was fine, up until he mentioned the woman. Then his face became bleak. All of a sudden, he threw the money back at Han Sr. No one wants your pity money. If you want to give me something, give me your medicine. Give me more of your red medicine. Why? What do you want it for? Hansen opened his eyes wide and looked at Zhu Ting. That is none of your business. You owe me, don't you? Consider this retribution, Zhu Ting said, with a scolding temperament. Hansen pulled out the last remaining bite of mushroom. He presented it to Zhu Ting, but when he tried to grab it, Hansen pulled his hand back. He smiled at Zhu Ting and said, I already gave you a slice. This is the only one I have left. If you want it, you're going to have to tell me what it does. Aside from making me horny, you mean? Zhu Ting said, before reaching out his hand again. Hansen avoided his grab again and said, Tell me clearly. Zhu Ting then told Hansen that the mushroom worked not only to heighten your desire for sexual activity, but to considerably strengthen your kidneys as well. The effects were powerful that even now, his kidneys were really warm. It was as if he had two hot water bottles inside him. He was brimming with so much energy that, even after playing with himself for so long, he was yet to feel tired. This stuff really is the good stuff. After Hansen heard what the red mushroom did, he was quite happy. Something like this would most definitely benefit his progress with Jade Sun Force. Learning it by himself without any supplements would take a long time. After all, the red mushroom had incredible effects, and if he was to consume an entire mushroom, Hansen wondered if he might be able to finish his study of Jade Sun Force. But the most blatant side effect of the mushroom was quite tempting for Han Senator if he got Ji Yan and to eat it. He pondered what might happen. Still, he wasn't able to bring the red mushroom out of the shelter and Ji Yin and was nowhere near the ice field. In the end, Hansen did not give the last bit of red mushroom to Xu Ting. The sexual effects of the thing were too scary. It was so powerful that not even deadly perfume could withstand it. Hansen was worried Zhu Ting might use the red mushroom for an ill purpose, so he refused to hand it over. Zhu Ting left angrily. He collected the 30,000 and cursed Hansen numerous times before leaving. Hansen then returned to his room and locked his door. He looked at the last piece of mushroom in his hand. He looked and looked until at last, he put it in his mouth. He chewed it a bit and soon the pleasant feel of it in his teeth became a warmth in his belly. His kidney was already quite warm, and now, it was even warmer. It was as if he had two little stoves inside him, generating an endless supply of energy. At the same time, Hansen felt the entirety of his body heat up. What was below the belt could hold up the sky. He was starting to feel horny, and he was overwhelmed with the desire to rip his clothes off. Hansen gritted his teeth and held off on that feeling, casting Jade Sun Force as he did. He wanted to use Jade Sun Force to absorb the power of the red mushroom. As he did this, someone knocked on the door. From behind it, a woman's voice called out to him. Chapter 588 Entering Hansen was shocked as a burning sensation overwhelmed his insides. His kidneys were sizzling with heat, and it felt as if they had become two fireballs ricocheting around his body. Hansen did not feel good. Damn it! Why are you coming here at this time? Hansen did not have the willpower necessary to suppress the riot that was going on inside him. Hansen was in a trance. He couldn't hear who it was outside or what the feminine voice was talking about. But regardless, he did not need to listen because Hansen could guess who it was. Visitors to his room were infrequent, as it was something few would dare to do. It was only on the odd occasion that Yang Monli would come to visit him, when there were important matters to discuss. Aside from her, there was no one else. Thinking about Yang Monli's thick, white legs, Hansen felt his brain start to implode. He couldn't take his mind off those delicious legs, and he wanted nothing more than to kick the door down and hop onto her. He used everything he had to suppress his lust and double-timed it on the Jade Sun Force. He was going to do his best to wait this desire out. In the second God's Sanctuary, unlike the first God's Sanctuary, anyone could enter another person's room. 
But Yang Manli was not the sort of person to burishly march into someone else's room, so Han Sin was not concerned about a possible intrusion. If he was able to avoid seeing her, then Han Sin was of firm faith that he could beat this lusty force that was consuming him. But Han Sin's heart suffered a shock quite quickly when he heard the door open. Holy smokes! Yang Manli, I thought you were a reserved person. What is going on with you today? Han Sen's mind was scrambled like an egg, and his heart was ablaze. He heard the footsteps of a woman tread across his room. Although Han Sen was forcing his eyes closed, when he heard her voice, the resolve of his will crumble to the machinations of lust. The image of a woman's beautiful naked body was omnipresent, layered across all of his thoughts. As he tried to suppress the carnal desires, his face started turning red. Then his nose began bleeding. The woman was walking closer and closer to Han Sen which almost made him scream out and call for aid. The effects of the red mushroom were too powerful. Zhu Ting was known to possess a strong will, but even he was eager to jump on top of a man for release. Given that, you might imagine the power of this mushroom. Hansen did not dare open his mouth or eyes. He was afraid that if he started talking, or even opened his eyes to look, his mind would forfeit all control to the lust that was attempting to conquer his mind. Leave. Although I enjoy sleeping with women, I will only do it with the woman I love. I'm not entirely against consuming pills for added excitement, but shouldn't that be a woman's job? How can I eat them and suddenly be all lusty? Leave. Leave. Get out of here. Get out of here. Young Monley. Han Sen's heart was encouraging itself to not give in, despite the rebellion of his mind. But the woman continued to approach Han Sen, having seemed to discover that something was not quite right with Han Sen's behavior. She walked in front of Han Sen, trying to get a look at him. The woman was drawing extremely near, and Han Sen could smell her. It was like his entire body was on fire and his nose was gushing like a fountain. Han Sen was fighting the desire to open his eyes, and he bit down on his teeth and kept them shut. He bit on his own tongue until it bled, hoping the addition of pain might help him beat back the lust. Blood dripped from his lips. The woman furrowed her brow, believing something had gone wrong with Han Sen's training. She suddenly thought that her uninvited entry was the catalyst for this apparent mishap of practice. The woman bent over and reached out her hand to feel for Han Sen's pulse on his neck. She seemed eager to find out what had happened to Han Sr. But when her delicate fingers touched Han Sen's neck, the floodgates of his mind were lost. It felt as if the fingers were bringing a fire, and it made Han Sen open his eyes. A beautiful woman stood before him, and her body was incredibly refined. Her height was almost the same as Han Senator, she was wearing a tight white battle suit. The curvatures of her thick, long legs, bubble butt, and big boobies were highlighted in the suit, perfectly sculptured, angled and curved to catch the attention of everyone and get their hearts racing. Her delicate face was as cold as it was elegant. It was the face of someone who was difficult to get close with. The woman was directly in front of Han Sen, and her lips opened as if to say something. But at this time, Han Sen couldn't hear a single thing. Although this woman did not look like Yang Manli, she was even more attractive, with a body and personality Han Sen favored even more. Han Sen lost all self-control. An aura of utter evil shone in Han Sen's eyes. He reached out his hands and tried to grab the woman. The distance was great enough that she was able to take a graceful step back to avoid his lecherous hands. The woman's face did not change. She just looked at Han Sen with the strangest of stares. But over the next second, her face warped. She could not believe Han Sen was coming after her. The woman thought it would be impossible for him to do so, but he did. It wasn't long before her back was against a wall and there was nowhere else for her to go. Han Sen blocked her every exit, and it was impossible for her to run away now. The woman became incredibly angry in her shock. She reached her hand out to hit Han Sen, but then quickly refrained. She knew she had disturbed his training and caused this predicament. Right now, his eyes were blood red, which more than suggested something was wrong. She pulled back her fist. As soon as she hesitated, Hansen grabbed onto the woman's battle suit. Within moments, the battle suit that had been designed to withstand bullets was ripped apart by Hansen's lust-fueled hands. Her succulent pair of big white breasts were now on full display in front of him. Hansen threw himself onto the woman and pushed her against the wall. One hand was clutched one of her giant boobs, which one hand could never hope to hold in its entirety, and his other hand reached down to squeeze her firm, bubbly butt. Hansen then brought down his lips to seal her own. 
The woman opened her eyes wide, and her body froze. Within just a few seconds, her curvy, voluptuous body had been grabbed and touched all over by Han Sr. A second later, her eyes were filled with the chaos fire of hatred, and she looked at Hans in a murderous eye. It was as if her entire body had entered berserk mode. Her body seemed to emit a purple light, and she took on the shape of a fairy. Ping! A walloping knee drilled its way into Hans Sin's stomach, which sent the horny baboon flying across the room. Then the woman jumped up and struck Hansen with her battle-axe-like legs while he was still airborne. Before he could even hit the ground, she kicked him sideways again. Ping! 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 The beautiful legs had become frightening weapons that struck Hansen around 30 times. And for the entire time he was beaten up, right, left, and even down, Hansen did not touch the ground. Her exposed breast jumped and jiggled with every kick. The woman knew that there was something wrong with Hansen, however, which helped to calm her down somewhat. So, she used her hands to try to conceal her wobbling, jelly breasts. Chapter 589 Absorbed The purple light that was being emitted from the woman's body started to fade. Although she was truly mad, she still managed to limit how much power she exerted on her horny aggressor. If she hadn't, with the power of someone who had unlocked her first gene lock, one kick would have been enough to end Han Sr. It was clear to her that something was wrong with Han Senator, so, despite her rage, she managed to put a cap on the damage she dealt him. Especially with the purple light, which she pushed into Han Sen's body. This purple light would attempt to course its way through his body and clear his mind from any encroaching force. Although Han Sen's body was suffering, he was able to feel a strange but gentle sensation flow throughout his insides. It seemed to help subdue and eliminate the effects of the red mushroom he had consumed. Clarity began returning to his mind, and when it had done so in a sufficient amount, he was able to close his eyes and focus on recasting Jade Sun Force. He then started to absorb the purple light and the red mushroom into his kidney. When these two distinct forces entered his kidneys, they made the organs glow in their two representative colors. His kidneys then started to glow like red, purple, and gold nuggets. This bounty of power was going all around his body. Hansen felt tremendous joy in his heart. Having both of these powers consume and reinvigorate him, he felt as if his Jade Sun Force was getting better and better. The process was quick and free from trouble, and it seemed that it would all be over soon. The woman summoned Beast Soul Armor to cover her body and went to sit on a chair. She had a curious, complicated look on her face as she watched Hansen, in between her blushing. I should have killed you. The woman thought about the shameful scene and terrible groping she had been subjected to, and she looked at Hansen with disgust. Queen had been traveling through the ice field, and she had come to learn that Hansen was living in the area from Huang Fu Pingqing. So she thought to give him a visit and ask him something. Queen did not want to disturb or affect anyone else, so she came here alone during the night. With her skills of espionage, she knew she would not be discovered on her way there, but this was the last thing she had expected to happen. When she thought about her body being felt all over by a man like Hansen, she wanted to slap him to death. But she was also conflicted with the knowledge that it was her disturbance that most likely prompted his out-of-character misdeeds. She didn't blame Hansen, but she again thought about how her body, which had never been touched by another man before, had been so vigorously fondled by someone in such a manner. She blushed deeply and gnawed her teeth in uncertainty until she almost drew blood. But Queen had something else nibbling at the back of her mind. With her talents, she knew she should have fended Hansen off and kept him away. But when she moved and used Heavenly Go, Hansen was able to follow each step and block her way. Perhaps this could be largely attributed to the small size of the stone house, but there was also the element of surprise. She would never have expected Hansen to possess a power such as this. It was this sudden shock that led to her disadvantage. She was the one who taught Hansen Heavenly Go, but her calculations of his progress with the skill were obviously incorrect and had led to this grievous mistake. Her mind and body were not prepared, which was why she had been pushed to the wall. If Queen had been prepared for what was to happen, things would have been different and it would have been impossible for Hansen to follow her steps and pin her to the wall. How did he do that? Queen's heart wondered to itself. She only taught Hansen the bits and bobs of Heavenly Go, but he had already shown that his level with the skill was not too far behind hers. At this rate, it was inevitably going to get better. With Hansen's fitness, and the number of skills he actively trained, 
it was unlikely he would lose to her in an all-out fight, either. This surprised Queen a lot. She almost didn't believe that the little amount of the skill she had taught Hansen could have been developed to such a great degree. Hansen's fitness was surprisingly powerful, too. His fitness was not too far behind hers, despite the fact that his first gene lock remained locked. From what she could, could recall, Hansen had only been in the second god's sanctuary for just over a year. This wasn't a popular place, and to attain such talents and abilities here in such a short time was almost terrifying. I was going to test his power, but that seems to be unnecessary right now. Perhaps when he unlocks his gene lock, I can allow him to join me. But Queen then thought back to the scene from earlier. Part of her wanted to leave and never lay eyes on this bastard again. But Queen was Queen, and she was of a greater resolve than most women. She did not leave. She just continued to sit there and look at Hansen coldly. When Hansen finally absorbed the red mushroom and purple light, although he hadn't finished learning Jade Sun Force as he had expected to, the horny side effects of the red mushroom seemed to have totally disappeared. But it was worth noting that this minor victory had only been achieved through the aid of the purple light. Now that his kidney had absorbed the purple light, things seemed different. He believed that if he ate the red mushroom again, the horniness would not affect him. To test this out, all he would have to do was collect the final mushroom and eat it, then practice the Jade Sun Force one last time to finish its training. Hansen opened his eyes and saw a queen in front of him, staring at him coldly. The scene and all its wretched sexual tension came rushing back to him. Imagining his prior grab of her boobies, he couldn't help but stare at her chest. Excellent. They were excellent. Hansen had laid eyes on many beautiful girls in his time, but this was the only stunner that was as powerful as he was. And her pair of boobs were in no way inferior to those possessed by Huang Fu Ping Cheng. Everything about her was perfect, pretty much. If you have a death wish, then by all means, continue to stare. Queen coldly looked at Han Senator. Her face did not display emotion, but anger continued to boil in her heart. If Han Sen's behavior had not been triggered by her intrusion, she would have slapped him to death by now. I am sorry, but this is my room. You are the one who came in uninvited. You cannot blame me. Hansen was coughing when he said this. He saw the woman continue to peer at him, and it looked as if she wanted to kill him. His heart was stricken with a chill, so he quickly shuffled along the proceedings and asked, Who are you? Anyway? And why have you come here? Hansen had never seen Queen's face before, and the lusty thoughts from earlier had messed up his head. Having light amnesia over what happened when he was beaten up, he had forgotten what skills Queen had used to beat him to a pulp. But Queen's general temperament had tipped Hansen into thinking he knew her from some place. Queen, Queen told him. Hansen was flabbergasted. He said, It's you. Why are you here? After Queen introduced herself, Hansen understood why she seemed so familiar. Only someone with the power she possessed, dwarfing the presence of any other woman he had met before, could name herself Queen. I am just passing by. I was coming to see if you were able enough to join us on our hunt. But from what I have seen so far, I don't think you are. When are you going to unlock your first gene lock? Queen emotionlessly said. Queen had indeed been impressed with the skills and fitness Hansen possessed, but it would be all for naught if he had not unlocked his first gene lock. Without doing that, he would never survive the fight she was going to take part in. I am afraid it will be a while yet before I unlock it, but I can still lend a hand in the hunting of creatures, Hansen responded. Queen didn't say anything else. She just stood up and got ready to leave the room. The reason why she stayed was so she could ask that question and see how Hansen responded. After all, it was because of her Hansen behaved the way he did. Chapter 590 Infinite Power Hansen did not plead for Queen to stay. After all, what had happened earlier was far too embarrassing. After I unlocked the first gene lock, where should I go to find you? Hansen asked. Send a message to Pink Ching. She will let you know, Queen answered as she exited the room. After she stepped out of the room, she stopped and said, in regards to what happened earlier, if word of it gets out, you are a dead man. Then she was gone for good. Seeing Queen leave, Hansen thought about all the words she had spoken. Clearly, Queen herself had unlocked her first gene lock. She also said the term us, which meant she wasn't hunting alone. A powerful character like her needed others on the same level to go on a hunt? There was only one possibility Hansen could think of. They were hunting a super creature. I wonder if they have killed a super creature before. 
Hansen was disturbed at this revelation, but he hadn't yet unlocked his gene lock. He simply wasn't qualified to join them. It looks like I must hurry up with the Dongshan Sutra, despite my inability to rush it. Hansen continued to sit where he was, thinking things over. If he wanted to unlock his first gene lock, the quickest way to do so was through mastery of jade skin. But he was afraid of learning that skill to its full extent, due to his fear of becoming like the cruel people of the Shuef family. It was a difficult decision to mull over. I have been learning Dongshan Sutra for so long, perhaps jade skin has been purified. Let's give it a go. Hansen really wanted to see if the people with Queen were truly off to hunt a super creature, and he wanted to know if they had killed one previously. For this, he thought it was worth the risk of going back to Jade Skin. But he already had Dong Shin Sutra, and if there were any issues while learning Jade Skin, he could always use Dong Shin Sutra to alleviate them. But before he continued learning Jade Skin, he returned to the snowy basin to collect the last red mushroom. He cut it into thin slices and used it to train Jade Sun Force. Although he continued to suffer a burning sensation, it was something he could keep under control. After he absorbed the energy of the red mushroom, his kidney shined and his power felt limitless. Hansen's heart felt strange, however. Although the Jade Sun Force he learnt was correct, it now seemed a touch different than before. There was a magical, purple light shining alongside it. That purple light must be the power queen shoved into me. It must be the power she gained from unlocking her first gene lock, too. But how can I use that to my advantage? I am not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing, since it seems to be trapped in my kidney now. Hansen was lost in thought. Whatever the case might be, there didn't seem to be any negative consequences to its presence. After consuming the rest of the mushroom, the Jade Sun Force was finally complete. Both of his kidneys now shone like stoves, providing endless power for Hansen 24-7. He was not sure if it was affected by the Jade Sun Force, but Han Sen's heresy mantra had also completed its first stage, Long Live. In the past, whenever Han Sen used heresy mantra, if he used it for too long, his heart could not withstand it. It'd end up damaging his body. But after learning Long Live, not only was heresy mantra more powerful, he could use it infinitely without damage being dealt to his body. With Jade Sun Force and Long Live, it's as if I have infinite power. Any difficult skills I learn can be used indefinitely without the need for a break. Hansen, after learning all this, became really happy. This was almost like a cheat. Although it felt like nothing special when dormant, using it felt extremely powerful. It was just like Idongmu. When he used Wind Strike, he concentrated all the power in his body into one fell strike. After he used the strike, there'd be a long recovery time. But right now, Hansen was different. He could use Wine Strike like normal, over and over without rest. He did not need a break. It was like playing a video game where people had to gather power to unleash their ultimate ability. But Hansen had glitched it so he could use his super ability over and over. Jade Sun Force and Long Live made a frightening combination. Hansen was shaken. But Hansen did not know how to use Wind Strike. But that did not matter. Because of the most powerful burst power skill there was, Thunder Knife. In the past, he would suffer a cooldown of at least 8 seconds before being able to cast it again. Now, he could use it over and over. It looks as if I'll have to modify Duel some more. Hansen was overjoyed, despite the extra trouble. Because of his vitality, his Duel skill had been lacking in certain departments. His vitality and power could never remain high enough to support the demands of the skill. But now things were different. Hansen could use Duel to its full extent. Every skill was an ultimate power skill, and now, his damage output would most likely be tripled. It would be far easier for him to kill the twin spirit like this. Hansen was of the mind to do it, and so he did. Off he went to modify his dual skill once again. He wanted to make it into an ultimate skill. He exchanged 5 s rank Saint Hall licenses for 5 Evolver class powerful sword skills. He borrowed the techniques inside and implemented them in his dual skill modifying them, so each skill performed was an ultimate one. The dual skill now was two sword skills combined with over a hundred movements. After vigorous modification, that number was brought down to 50. After even more extensive work, that number was brought down to 12. Those two sets of 12 movements were the skills that dealt the purest, most concentrated amounts of damage. Every move had its own special trait, but when they were all combined and cast at once, he didn't believe any opponent could withstand such a devastating attack. 
no matter their power or level lead on Han Sr. This is the dual skill I have always wanted. Dealing with the twin spirit should no longer be difficult. But I wonder if Qi Xiuen has managed to successfully convince Li Xingluan and Philip yet. Han Sen could no longer wait to attack the royal shelter. Qi Xiuen had faced much resistance in his attempts to convince Li Xingluan and Philip. This was because he was unable to solve their silver beetles problem. Li Xingluan and Philip did not dare attack a random royal shelter while under the thumb of their current threat. So, Qi Xiuen had to pay a heavy price to convince Li Xingluan and Philip to agree and join the attack on the royal shelter. The ice field will belong to me, Qi Xiuen. Qi Xiuen returned to the Black God shelter with much excitement. Taking the royal shelter and becoming the boss of the ice fields was an exciting prospect for him. And a record like this was sure to paint him in a different light in his father's eyes. Maybe he'd even be able to inherit Dong Lin.